appropriate to the character of the area, and the density, although relatively low, is sympathetic to the edge of settlement and uh, location. All five houses will be three beds, which will provide much needed family housing, and each house will have a rear garden of at least 11 metres depth. The row of houses has been carefully cited. After pre-application uh, discussions with uh, the planning officers, so that they will not harm the amenities of the neighbouring properties. Although the land will need to be raised for Prop 1, this will still be lower than the adjoining properties in Orpington Close. Fencing and landscaping will also mitigate the impact of the development on the, uh, the boundary with Orpington Close. Access will be taken by the new road that has been built from Hurst Road to serve the completed 12 dwellings, and sufficient car and cycle parking will be provided. Flooding is recognised as a key issue, and a great deal of time has been spent on this matter. Initially, the Environment Agency objected to the application. However, following the provision of further information, this objection has now been withdrawn. The revised FRA now shows that even after an allowance is made for climate change, the development will not result in any additional flood risk for adjoining properties. Surface water drainage will be handled by an underground storage system which will discharge into the public sewer system at the Greenfield runoff rate. This has been agreed with the Council's drainage officer and Thames Water. Um, an affordable housing contribution will be made via Section 106 agreement and sewer will be payable upon commencement of the development. In summary, the proposed development is acceptable and planning permission should be granted. Thank you very much. And the last question to speak then is Councillor Lindsay Ferris, the board member who actually listed it. Good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. <coughs> I first met the residents of Orpington House in early 2014, when most of the area being discussed tonight was either underwater or extremely boggy. I am somewhat concerned that the Environmental Agency should have withdrawn their objection to building houses on this site. Back in 2012, I objected to this site being included in the MDD, as did my predecessor Stephen Conway. Paragraph 44 of your report clearly indicates that this site is mainly flood zone 2 with a smaller area of flood zone 3, a tiny bit of flood zone 1. And that development on and that development on these flood zones is allowed only in exceptional circumstances where there are wider sustainability benefits and that it must not increase the risk of flooding elsewhere. I cannot see any reference to wider sustainability benefits from building on this site and ask the planning committee to advise what are these benefits, if any. On the second point, the residents of numbers 14, 15 and 16 Orpington Close feel very exposed to development on this site. The lay of the land is such that water would move down from any new houses towards the Orpington Close area. In addition, the drainage system associated with these houses would no doubt link into the drainage systems from the houses built on the adjacent site. This would increase the flow down this pipe so that it could exceed the maximum flow rate, and I believe it's five metres per second. This drainage system flows into the current drainage system used for Orpington Close. There are concerns that the additional flow from these extra houses can have an impact on the Orpington Close system, thereby causing a back of the water with all the problems that could cause. I ask you to refuse this application as it has the potential to have a knock-on impact on houses in Orpington Close, thereby increasing the risk of flooding to these properties and I would, and would I believe, breach policy CC09. The fact that this site is in the MDD is irrelevant in this case due to the increased impact of flooding on neighbouring properties. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I go to members, I'll just ask the, um, the officers to come back on the points that have been raised by the, uh, the speakers. And clearly they're all around the, the flooding, so if either of you feel free to to respond to them. So is that the flooding and the sewage man management, um, if you could comment about the water draining to the right rather than <coughs> downwards. The sewage backing up. Um, probably for you just it may be that clauses 12 and 13 with a bit come wrong there. The benefits to the community of this application and 
what the re re relevance is of this of it being in the development plan, what the process has been that it's already gone through. And finally, if you could clear up for us whether Orchid and Close is lower or higher than this um, development site. Thank you. Thank you. I might need some guidance as we move from that seven. Yeah. Um, my understanding is there's a existing um, underground station there. Power pumping station, thank you. Um, which services Orpington Close. Um, this property here is lower than it. So, and it, on its own, it's been found, its drainage purposes have been found at two litres per second to be acceptable for the, the um, for proper discharge over time of drainage from that site. So, there, it shouldn't anticipate any upstream backing up and then impact on the storage of it upstream, if that makes sense. I'm not the expert, so the expert. That's me. my understanding. Hi, um, just to clarify a few points. So, um, basically, as has already been said, part of the development site is in um, flood zone three. It's a tiny part, and then the rest of the development is in flood zone two. Um, so, how the developer is planning to deal with that is um, by raising part of the site out of the flood extent. So the flood extent, what they've done is they've modelled um, a storm event for a 1 in 100 plus 35% climate change. So they've included the climate change allowance. Um, and the flood extent shows that there would be flooding, alluvial flooding up to where the road is. So if we could just go back to the drawing which shows the green area. So the area within the site that goes up towards the road, that's the flood extent basically. Uh, during a 1 in 100 plus 35 percent climate change, then the land is raised. Um, underneath the road, they are planning to put in an attenuation tank, which would deal with surface water runoff. Um, the idea is that the uh, new development will not um, cause any problems in terms of uh, greenfield runoff rate. So they have to match greenfield runoff rate, which is 2.1 litres per second. So in putting the attenuation pond in, also at the attenuation tank underneath the road, they'll be matching that 2.1 metres per second because there'll be a hydro break within the system. There'll be a hydro break within the system which will control the, the uh, release rate of water. Um, what is going to happen is there will be a connection into the existing Thames water sewer. Um, the drainage officers are aware that there has been issues in the past with this Thames water. Um, surface water sewer, um, the drains officers have been in contact with Thames Water on several occasions and have been reassured by Thames Water that the problems that have, that have occurred in the past have been resolved um, and also Thames Water have been consulted on this planning application and they provided reassurance in writing that there is enough capacity within their system to deal with um, the surface water runoff from the site. Um, it says no response. Sorry. There's no response. As far as I'm aware, there was a response. There's no response in the paper. Thank you, mate. Sorry. Thames Water did, I'm not aware of a response to this application, specifically to this application. Via the planning application, no. Strange comment has made point that they, the capacity is sufficient. So I can't hear you. Thank you. The consultation for this application, my understanding, did not include comment received from Thames Water. The comment from Drainage Engineer does include a reference to um, liaising with Thames Water in relation to whether the capacity is available. Excuse me? And it's available. Can't we be interrupting? Sorry, there's not going to be any more. Sorry. So to clarify, the consultation response from the drainage, Council's drainage engineer included reference to discussion with Thames Water about the capacity of the drainage um, capacity that was included in this application that was considered to be sufficient. So the consultation occurred with them, not through.
through a formal consultation process with this application? Just, just to clarify, I spoke to the uh, drainage officer who uh, looked at this planning application this morning, who confirmed that he'd spoken to Thames Water and had said that there is enough capacity within the system. Um, whether that's inviting or not, I'm not sure, but that's what the drainage officer has confirmed. It is not unusual to not receive a response from external consultations. If there's no problems. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, Justin, did you want to sort of comment about it being in the the uh, development plan and what process that sort of gone through already? Um, it, yeah, as you've heard, the, the, the site, so the wider site, has been allocated already in the development plan for uh, up to 20 units or around 20 units. 12 of those have been consented. You might remember it at the committee if you were serving at the time. Um, and so there is uh, five proposed in this scheme, which could be up to eight if the applicant was uh, minded to do so. So in undertaking the allocation, um, a sequential test has already been already been done so the application is considered to be generally sound in planning terms subject to further details. Now we've got those further details in the application, the flood risk assessment etc and we know that the Environment Agency on submission of further information have no objection to the scheme subject to the conditions that you see in the report and you know that the drainage officer likewise has no objection subject to condition. And now I'll open it up to Ward to so the uh, committee members, but Ward Councillor, Councillor Jarvis, first to go. <coughs> yeah, I've only, uh, I have a very, fairly small problem actually, not in page 53, item 18, which says that the part of any building hereby permitted shall be occupied. I presume that should mean shall not be occupied. There's a missing not. Yeah, you're right, it looks like a typo. It should shall not be occupied. Thank you. Other than that, uh, uh, having looked at the um, scheme itself, I, can, I can't, if it's in the MDD plan, I can't see too many objections to it, and I, I don't have any objections to it. Yeah, thank you. Any other members wishing to? Michelle, then. Is the attenuation tank going to be adapted by the borough or will it be maintained by a management company? Um, and you said that uh, Thames Water is okay with this. Did they agree that the uh, pumping station would be sufficient as well? You said they'd be okay with everything else. Um, lastly, you're talking about two garages is actually spaces. Now, reality is you've got a two you've got two garages there. Exactly, on that little thing there. It looks like you can park in front of them, which is more likely what people would do. Uh, the amount of people who actually, look, contrary to the borough's idea of one half of one car space per garage, it's like one in 20 that actually use their garage for anything other than accumulating uh, garbage in there, or something like that, or putting bicycles in there occasionally. Um, and the floodplain pictures that were shown, how does that relevant? How is that relevant that the gentleman showed? How is that relevant to their new heights of the development here? How will that affect it? Hey, so I'll, I'll respond on the attenuation tag. So the bar council has a adopted such strategy, which was signed off by members back in January of 2017. Um, which discourages the adoption of underground attenuation tanks by the council, um, in which case it's highly likely that it would be a private management company that would be taking on the responsibility of maintaining the underground attenuation tank. Um, in terms of uh, the, sorry, can you repeat the question about the uh, flood? Uh, well, the flooding map that was shown by the gentleman. Uh, how does that relate to the new design of the next one or the keep going? We had the uh, flood zones. That one? That yes, one. that one. Where is the new development going to be? Uh, where have they raised the thing so it won't be in the flood zone? So as, as far as I'm aware, the, uh, that, so the red area was showing the flood zone three, it looks like. 
Yeah. And what the gentleman explains, it sounds like that's the area that was, yeah, it says totally submerged during 2000, April 2018. So when you look at the flood maps that the developer has provided, showing the modelling for the 1 in 100 plus 35 percent climate change, the whole of the development area is out of the floodplain. It's not within it. It's raised above the floodplain area, so that area should be flooded. It's also worth noting that the modelling demonstrates that the surrounding houses will not be impacted at all. So the development isn't going to have, according to the modelling that the developer provided, it's not going to have any worse impact on flooding to the area. I'll just you turn my head. Yeah, you said the developer provided it. Have what sort of checking have we done on it that it is 100% correct? So the drainage officer that reviewed it is a qualified engineer who has looked at all of the calculations that are provided um, and they run through the calculations, make sure that they stack up and that they're correct um, and then they make their assessment of whether it's um, valid or not and as far as the drainage officer um, has said in this case is that it all stacks up and it's correct. But we are fully reliant on the developer providing the correct information. Chris, just come up with car parking. Um, you're right. I don't. There is no need. We don't count garages as a parking okay. space. And in terms of here, if you have a quick look, there is. You got on there? Oh, yeah, Next one. Yeah. Next one. Yeah, that's right. So as you can see up here, there's three houses, and you've got six vehicle parking spaces here, which generates two per each. Then you've got these two here with the driveways. That driveway is just a about 11, 12 metres long, so you can get two in the first one. You can get one in the second. However, there are three parking spaces over here. Uh, at point two for visitors, you only need technically one, so there is over capacity, uh, sorry, over provision in terms of unallocated straight visitor parking. So this, this meets the standards, if not exceeds it slightly. If not allocated, Yes, yeah, three. Three. Okay. Just to come back well, to yes. that question, yes. No, the, the, the original one. So since the attenuation tanks will be maintained by a management company, would the local residents be uh, aware of this management company so they can sue them just in case it does flood? Yeah, so when the residents move in, they'll, uh, likely have to pay a management fee to that management company for the maintenance of um, the particular feature. But I mean, I'm not sure whether it's worth talking about that at the moment because they, there hasn't been a decision made as to whether it would be the council or a private management company adopting it. As I stated, the sub strategy discourages the council from adopting uh, underground storage tanks. Um, but it doesn't say we won't and it doesn't say we would never do that. But my question is what happens? Will the residents of the surrounding area who were complaining about the flooding, will they be aware of who the management company is if there is a problem? Yeah, I'm sure that that would be made publicly available. There's no reason why that information would be kept secret. I think just to assist on that point, the due to the first part of the development that's obviously not in front of us today, there are attenuation tanks in that section. Um, because of attenuation tanks underneath a road, the council does not adopt carriageways on top of attenuation tanks that aren't obviously too in line with obviously our requirements. Uh, and as such, we've stated that this site would not be able to be adopted. The highway sections would not be adopted by the council and they wouldn't be available for adoption in the future should the residents wish to call them in under the Private Street Works Act. Thank you. Wait, wait. Then Mark. So the EA did have objections and then when the plan was put forward by the applicant the EA reviewed the, those plans and then they removed their objections. So the applicant submitted a flood risk assessment in the first place which the EA had objections to so they weren't happy with various things like um, lack of allowance for climate change so as I stated um, their current flood risk assessment, which is what we've looked at now, looks at a climate change allowance of 1 in 100 plus 35 percent climate change. However, their original flood risk assessment didn't take into account the climate change allowances, and obviously because we're getting a lot of uh, climate change issues at the moment, that's why the Environment Agency have now said that it's really important that climate change is considered. So the first flood risk assessment didn't look at the climate change allowances, they didn't have any freeboard um, levels above to cater for when they're raising the ground level and the flood levels. 
um, they, there, was a, there was a lack of mitigation within the garage. Um, they were concerned about the extent of ground raising because it wasn't clarified. Um, and there was a lack of fencing details. So that's what the environment agency originally objected to. Um, as far as I'm aware, the applicant then went away and revised their flood risk assessment and then submitted a new flood risk assessment, which is what the flood risk assessment that we've all viewed and looked at now. And within that, they addressed all of those points and uh, subject to the environment agency reviewing all of that, they were then happy. And I believe it was in June this year that they came back saying they no longer had any objections. Um, it's just worth pointing out as well that um, as a lead local flood authority, Woking Borough Council is responsible for reviewing the surface water and groundwater conditions of a planning application, and it's the Environment Agency who uh, review the fluvial extents within the flood risk assessment. Good. Yeah, come back. Um, next question. Simon, you have a picture there which shows you the side of 15 Orpington Close. Yes, that one. So, I presume, is that 15 Orpington close in the corner? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, you mentioned uh, uh, in your presentation that the ground levels were going to be raised by, did you say 35%? The ground levels are... So, the other side of that fence, there we go. So, if you look at that now, that's the ground level. What it would have been nice to have seen is the ground level of Perth Road, the ground level of Wellington Close, and I don't know if you come up with that name, but clues <laughs> in the question. Um, and then the ground level of the, is this going to be Wellington Close extension, or is this going to just be continuation of Wellington Close? Sorry, so no, that's Orpington Close. Wellington Close is the new one that's just been completed or in the process of being completed. This is an extension to Wellington Close, correct? Yes. Right. So, it would have been nice to have seen the level at Hurst Road, the level at Wellington Close, the proposed new level of Wellington Close extension, and the level, and I'm not suggesting none of us around this table are drainage experts, but if you're going to raise that ground by 30 something percent, just the other side of that fence, you've got a house. So, what's going to happen with that water? I mean, what, what I'm saying is, I, 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 of course I'm not a draining expert, but unless the ground, you're going to have drainage just the other side of that fence, taking all the, the runoff from the built-up area, that in percentage terms could be as much as a metre, I, I can't see how that water's going to get away. Thank you very much. The properties in Orpen and Close are raised to a degree as well, in, to a similar extent. I, I've reviewed the file from 2003 and there are increases in ground level. If you view this photograph, um, you'll notice that the, the fence slopes down with the contours of the site. This property here is, this is the ground level up here, so it's, a, it's upwards of about 800 mils above natural ground level. How many? About 800 mils above natural ground level. And so, how does that compare with Wellington Close? Part one. Part one. Um, there is raising as well. It's probably similar. I, I couldn't give you figures in terms of exact, in terms of how it relates to it, mm. but there has been raising at this property as well. These properties here to achieve the same flooding um, protection outcome. So I, I have no concerns with the with the consistency in, in ground across the three sites, and I made, I, made, uh, I went to fair fair amount of detail in terms of ascertaining the relationship of the proposed ground levels uh, in this area here and how it related to the two, and then there's, there's a largely discernible difference. Yeah, I, as I said, we're not drainage experts, but we've got to have sympathy for people who live there and they've got to have the reassurance that we get this right. It was reassuring to hear from Chris that we won't adopt these tanks. That 
Yeah, is that right? right? We're not, we, were, we are not adopting this site no. in terms of the road. And we don't want to adopt In it. terms of the tanks, it's not something we encourage, as Franz mentioned. And I was offering that basically saying, as we're not offering, because we're not taking the roads, it's very unlikely. Yeah. It's very unlikely. We and I'm glad to hear that because if the developer gets it wrong, the developer should be paying for their mistakes further down the road, unless they pass that on to a management company and they take on the liability. Yep. So it's good to hear that. But again, I go back to your point. <laughs> These are the people that live there, and we've got to try and do our best to make sure that we're mitigating all of the possible risks from a potential flooding risk down the road. And you know, we've seen pictures of some just earlier on this year. <clears throat> just to um, just to offer something in terms of levels. Um, obviously, you're all right. We pulled out the drawing earlier to have a look at the levels of the adjacent site, just to give you the comfort uh, and the, the the chamber level on. The, the site that's just been constructed. Yeah. Uh, just to the edge, if you go back to the site there. So just to, about here, one of the chamber, the chamber level there is 38.52. And just as you go into the site, there's another chamber level here. And the chamber level there in the carriageway is um, 38.325. So it's falling slightly towards that site. And then it drops again to the, there's another one on the corner which drops to 3747, which then lines up with the requirements that the, 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 the ESA in terms of the finished floor levels for the properties that are being proposed in this site. Yeah, okay, I'm not an expert, that sounds okay. I'm just very glad that Wokingham haven't got the liability that in a year, two years time, we've got pumping machines down there at council payers' cost, pumping out something that could potentially flood. That's all I'm saying. Related area, so the 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 whole site has uh, risk level one, two, and three. The houses themselves will be in area one of the flood risk, presumably. The buildings themselves are there. Two, two. The houses are in two, so that's already given. And the three is where exactly the bottom of their gardens or the bottom of the site. Three. Three is a small section in this area. Just that top left. So it's it's um, to the left of the green area. So at the so bottom of that site and, and the next area. So it, it, it's in the the red line site, but it's not yeah. in anybody's garden. So it's nobody's okay. nobody's private land. And outside of that particular shape or site there, the below it, then that's what level of a uh, risk is that a one or two? The, because I'm, I'm trying to relate pages seventy five to seventy seven. 77 has that top bit of the site where the houses are shown, and the road appears to exit at the bottom right hand corner. And then on page 75, that bottom right hand corner goes down to a long right angle road. Is that right angle road in, in a high risk flood area as well? From, or is that a low risk? Because if it's the exit road, it's the only access road. If that's in a risk area, it effectively blocks the houses off roads. Yeah, so just to be clear, the, the, the road, all, all the development is in two rather than three. There's no development proposed in zone three. And, then, and that's the, the two is it, what, 30 year risk is as opposed to 100 year risk, is that right? 100 is level one, level two is 30 year risk. Flood zone two is between one and 100 and one in 1,000 year storm event. Okay. It just, I was concerned about the, the exit road, if that was in a high risk area, um, then that would be the only entrance and exit. And if that was flooded, they'd block the people in those. That was the main concern for that. Um, but you're saying that isn't a risk. The my next question is, with these um, attenuation tanks, or whatever they're called, the water drains into them, it doesn't stay there forever. So where does it go eventually? How does it, does it drain out, or where does it drain to? Um, so what they're proposing for the site is um, some permeable paving. Um, and a high-risk drainage system. So basically what will happen is the rain will come down onto the surfaces, um, it will hit the permeable paving, um, it will infiltrate through, and then it will be stored in a sub-base before it then enters the, uh, the, cellular, the cellular tanks underneath the highway. Then what happens is it will fill up and it will be stored within that, and there's a hydro break at the end of the system. So the hydro break will kick in and it will release the water at a controlled rate that mimics the green the hill runoff system. rate. Yeah. It will mimic, yeah, so it will be released into the Thames water public access water sewer. 
which then uh, discharges ultimately into the uh, Twyford Brook. And that's been calculated to uh, cope with much higher than normal levels, is it? Yes. Yeah. So it's been calculated to cope with 1 in 100 plus 40% climate change, okay. which is demonstrated for the Members, any more questions? Oh, one more oh, question, on yeah. um, the, the two car park, sorry, two car park spaces per house, are they linear or side by side? They look like they're linear here, is that right? No, they're all side by side other than plot four, which, no, plot five. Oh, those six, so for those three blocks, okay, thank those you. Them, plot five yeah. is only one that has ten yeah. Members, any more? I just want to... I don't know whether it's been cleared up in my mind really, so I'm going to ask the question again. Um, the objector said that um, his land was lower than this land had been raised up to, or will be raised up to. Is that correct, or, or, or are they going to be level? Is 15 Orpington going to be the same level as plot one? The dwelling, uh, the finished floor level of the dwelling would be approximately the same. The rear garden is um, this area here is the same as well, it's unchanged from its natural form as this area is as well. So it, it, the dwelling, the rear garden of the dwelling is lower. Does that make sense? But these rear gardens are the <coughs> other way, so they're not. Uh, 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 I think just to assist with that again, if you have a look on page seventy seven. Picture might be slightly bigger than ours. So I've got my document. If you look at the, there's, you can see if you look at the end of the road, the, the proposed road, it shows the level of 37.6 in my eyes. That. And if you look at just into the corner in front of 15, it's uh, 37.75. So between the two, it's you know you're talking a couple of hundred difference between those two plots and in terms of the ground levels. Why are you looking at that? Can I just ask? So you go from 37.50 to 37.25 to 37.36.75. Is that what you're looking at, Chris? Is it the contours? Uh, well, the picture you're looking at, I was, looking, I was just taking the spots that were shown on the carriageway and then obviously on the corner of Orbington Close just to give you an idea of the levels across that section. Yeah. <coughs> but that's assuming that the other side of the red line, the contour line is equal or level, isn't it? Um, well, being this, well, I haven't got the full, this obviously this topographical survey has been overlaid into this plan, yeah. so I haven't got the, 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 the full topographical survey, but my, you are right, it's a contour line, but it just, it depends on the spot that's obviously next to it, whether it can take that location, but it gives the, the from looking at the ground, it's, it's not it's showing it to be any different, significantly different. Yeah. Uh, Angus. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. It, it does seem that uh, with the eventual responses from EA, Thames Water through the drainage officer, the dra drainage officer's comments, uh, if they don't have objection, we're on very weak ground here. Um, but I think the one thing that would reassure me and probably the residents of Orpington Close is that the levels when this development actually takes place is very carefully monitored so that we do have the houses built in the form of which we're approving today, or maybe approving today. Justine, did you come back on that, please? Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, we, we have conditioned uh, the, the detailed site, so uh, you're, you're absolutely right that it's going to be important that it's going to be What, Wayne? Um, just to build, Angus is absolutely right. It's always Angus. <laughs> um, can we have that, that, that go through your approval, Chair? That point? It, it, it's technical. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, we, we could always uh, take it. Take it out. It was very good. <laughs> 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 
um, yes, yeah, that point that can be uh, that we go through each other and it's the actions. Okay, thank you. Right, members, any more questions at all? We're all clear on the, the flooding drainage. Okay. Right then, we'll go, we'll go to the vote. There's no more questions. The recommendation is set out on page 48 for approval then. See, in the members' update, there are a number of changes to the conditions and the condition numbers. So all those in favour of approving this application, please show. So we have one, two, three, four, five. All those against, we have two. So that application is passed. Thank you very much, members.
proposal on the character of the area. Um, as has been outlined in the report, the proposed dwelling follows the refusal of a previous dwelling on the site with regards to its impact on the character of the area and its dismissal by the inspector. However, the inspector highlighted that the site was narrow and this resulted in an incongruous design. Um, it is considered that the current proposal is acceptable in terms of its impact on the character of the area by closely mirroring, mirroring that of the adjacent cottages despite the plus narrow width. Further objection has been rega raised regarding loss of light to a side facing window at number 111. However, the proposal has not been found to be harmful and this is addressed in the report. With regards to flooding and drainage issues raised by Councillor Hobbs, an acceptable flood risk assessment has been received and the building has been arranged in such a way um, that the more vulnerable aspects are located in the area of lowest risk. The Environment Agency's records demonstrate that the site is within flood zone 2 and the flood risk and drainage officer considers that condition number 7 is sufficient to mitigate any issues. So to conclude, the development does not lead to a harm, harmful impact to the character of the area, neighbouring amenities, highway safety, the amenity of neighbouring occupiers, protected species or protected trees, and it's recommended that this application is approved subject to conditions for the reasons I set out in the report. Um, sorry, just to go back to the updates quickly. Um, there was one uh, error in the approved plans, um, which has been amended. Um, an additional neighbour comment was received um, with regards to um, the plans. Um, drawing attention to minor discrepancies, however, the discrepancies in a plan, um, which is at quite a high scale, so it's considered minimal. Um, and also with regards um, out of the, the rear facing kitchen window at number 111. Um, but as is discussed in the report, um, it's not considered that there would be an overbearing over impact on number 111. Um, and Councillor Hobbs wished to make some comments, which I've included. I don't know if you're going to read them. No, but they're, they're there in um, the update. If you can, okay. Thank you very much. Well, we don't have any inspiration uh, speakers or a ward member. We do have two ward members very close, so I'll look to John and Wayne to go first. John? Yes, if I could. Um, well, I'm, I'm also concerned about the flood risk because it doesn't seem to take into account the fact that this area is deliberately flooded by Thames Conservancy when they close the barrier at the Thames Barrier down to the bottom of, at the bottom of the River Thames. And that's allowed because they can flood this area to relieve London of being flooded. Now, there's a building across the road which is River Court. That car park would not allow to be raised because it floods when they flood the area. That's deliberate. They know it's going to flood and that car park floods. Similarly, there's a, um, a warehouse just over the other side in Twyford, which was not given planning permission to allow the floor to be raised. It had to be kept at low level to allow the, the area to flood and that building now floods on a regular basis. They actually use it for tyres, so basically it doesn't really matter to them anymore. But it deliberately floods. Now I'm told, I've just been heard, that this building is going to be raised. Now Thames Conservancy never allowed any raising or lowering of, or losing of area in the water area, in that area, because they needed every bit of room to flood it. Can I be assured that Thames Water have accepted the loss of this area? I think we'd like to answer that. Um, Thames Water having responded to consultation. Um, obviously, I'm not aware of the other applications to which you're referring. Um, and obviously, we've got to assess every application on its own merits. Um, I haven't had any, there hasn't been any, um, well, the Environment Agency have responded saying that they don't wish to be consulted on the application, so they essentially have made an objection. Um, yeah. Um, so just to touch base on the comment that you made about, is it River Court, which is just up the road? Is, that, um, is it immediately over the other side of the yeah, road? Yeah, so it's a block of flats, yes. is it? So there's a block of flats 
uh, the other side of the road, which myself and a colleague looked at the planning application earlier on, um, and that car park was deliberately designed to flood uh, because of the flooding issues within the area. Um, my colleague and I also looked back at our historical records of flooding in the area and we haven't had any reports of flooding to this particular property and the two surrounding properties in this area either um, within the last 25 years, that's when our historical records go back to. Um, it's worth also noting that the uh, applicant in this area has gone above and beyond what they would normally be required to do in terms of their flood risk assessment. Um, so if you look at the um, Environment Agency flood risk maps, they show this particular property <coughs> as being in flood zone 2. Um, the applicant has actually done some further modelling, which then demonstrates that it changes the flood zones, um, and a tiny part of the building which is being proposed will actually be in flood zone uh, 3. However, they're proposing to raise the building only slightly to take it out of the flood extent um, and the drainage officer who was reviewing this application is confident that there um, won't be any increase in flood risk to surrounding areas or to the property. Would you like to come back John? I would. What I'm talking about is not a flood risk, this is a flood fact. What happens is they close all the weirs and all the, uh, all the way down the Thames and allow the water to come back up. Now, if you live down the back of Wargrave, that floods to an average of three foot deep. And the rule down there is that the, every house has to be built above the 1947 flood level. But they can't fill the area, they have to build it on stilts to allow the water to go underneath so that when the Thames barrier is closed, London does not flood. This also happens at Richmond and other places. Now, I, I'm concerned that you do not know anything about this you are you have not stated that you know that this happens. So it's not a flood risk from flood coming down from behind, it's flood coming up from the Thames, deliberate flooding. I think we need to know whether this has been taken into consideration. Is, is, is it worth just no. we're just obviously on that point, I think it's worth just having a look. I don't know if you've got Google Maps on here just showing its location and the fact of not the location of the flood, it's not not flood extents, the elements you're talking about. Um, it's uh, one, and, one and a half kilometres from the River Thames. And not only that, where, where the site is located in relation to, if you look at the satellite view, it's located in amongst existing houses, not within an area that Thames purposely flood as a result of the, the barriers. So I think... I think if I would report it's in the middle of housing as well. But that, that was left to flood deliberately. And, and if, the Environment Agency are relying on this site as part of a measure to alleviate flooding on the River Thames. I'm surprised they haven't responded in consultation. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, just to go back to that, if, mm -hmm. if it was being used as that, then the Environment Agency would most certainly have come back with comments on it. Mm -hmm. okay. Stefan, could we go to your picture? Um, the one with the garage. <laughs> Yeah. Before, yeah, before and after. Yeah. So, we are, they are not proposing to raise the floor level of the, ex which would have been the existing garage. The floor level is going to stay exactly the same as the floor level as the garage was. That's correct, isn't it? Because somebody said they're going to raise it, but why would they want to raise that? 